Good morning, friends and neighbors of Hateville and former uh, friends and neighbors of Hateville. This is Dewey. We just th hit a thousand followers on the Hateville channel. That thrills me. And I have a lot to say about that. Uh, and I have a purpose for this walk this morning. And it's mainly for those of you uh, who don't live here anymore. I've Hi, Joe. Hello, David. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to start this walk. It's not really a history walk. It's a let's look at Hateville as it is today walk. But uh, I'm at the intersection of Walnut Street and North Fulton Avenue. And I want to show you guys, especially those of you I have in mind who haven't been here in uh, a while but grew up here i'm finding that those followers really enjoy seeing hateville now because it brings back memories of then uh, hi matina i'm standing at the corner the intersection where my house is very near i'm only a few houses from this intersection but i'm going to start here because it's a beautiful day this morning it's the coldest day so far here in hateville it's 48 degrees but the sun is out it's beautiful um and here at the corner of walnut street and north fulton avenue i'll show you this new house of course, you guys know lots of new houses are being built in Hateville. Uh, my house is down there. Downtown Hateville is that way. This is Walnut Street going down the hill. Walnut Street going up the hill. This man recently painted his house green and put in a new lawn, so maybe he's selling it. I'm not sure. Uh, but this little lot right here was never developed since the city began in 1891 this little tiny little thing and it was all trees when we moved here three years ago and there you go now it's a house and down walnut street we have a lot of new infill development happening there but as you guys know good morning little squirrel as you guys know i new houses are nice but i prefer The renovation and, and preservation of old homes. And since I've been here, this is a little back house behind uh, a house on Walnut. This is 3201. And I can imagine lots of people have lived in that little back house apartment over the years. But since I've been here, here at the intersection of Lake Drive and North Fulton, this house was abandoned. Uh, uh, not abandoned, obviously somebody owned it, but it was, what's the better word? It was sitting there empty and in disrepair. And so was this one. A very nice man bought that and fixed it up. And a lovely couple bought that one and fixed it up. And put some flamingos in the front yard. So this is the intersection of North Fulton and Lake Drive. And uh, there are some homes that have been renovated on Lake Drive, uh, this stretch, but not as many as in other parts of town. I wanted to turn this way and show you the little yellow house, but the sun is in my way. There you can get a better look at 516 Lake Drive. It's very beautiful. The one next to it is very well done. These two are really well done. My friend Lavonda Ivy Gibbs, who follows us, her family had a lot of houses in this area, the Ivy family. And uh, I think she told me this was her grandparents' house, but I cannot remember. But uh, I'm walking to a particular home on Old Jonesboro Road that I wanted to show you. But on the way, I want to talk about this house a little bit too. But we're coming down to Woodrow Avenue. And a lot of local people have told me when they lived in this area, Woodrow, uh, Lake, Walnut Street, North Fulton, you see it's a very steep hill. And everybody who lived around here told me when I grew up as a kid, we used to ride our bikes down this hill. So every time I take a walk and I imagine, I imagine the kids riding down this hill on their bikes and another kid standing down there holding guard to make sure nobody walks, uh, is driving through. Had to have happened. A kid standing down here going, it's good. Another kid went, okay. And down the hill they came on their bicycle. So this lovely house right here uh lavanda this is where lavanda gibbs grew up i'm not sure where she lives now she told me but i forgot but i did a post about this house a while back 
because uh, it kind of stands out architecturally here. And then also you can't really tell from this picture. Maybe you can a little bit, but you see how the brick is one kind here and then up to these two windows over the brick is different. I noticed that and I was like, I wonder what that's about. So um, when I um, started talking to Lavanda online, she told me, oh, I grew up in that house. It was built in, I think she said 58, maybe a little later, by her father. But what happened was, uh, in 1968, he decided he wanted to add onto the house. There it is. This is 526 Woodrow. We're at the intersection of Woodrow and North Fulton. And, uh... So this beautiful house was built by her father and originally it only went up to um, that first window right there. And then that was an open carport. But then in the late 60s, 67, 68, her father decided he wanted to close that in and make it a garage. And so that's why the, uh, the bricks, you can see the change in the bricks from here to there, because these are 50 years newer than these or something like that. And the part that I find really interesting is in 1968, the, uh, the Baptist Orphans Children's Home, the, uh, I always call it the wrong thing, the Georgia Baptist Children's Home, which was an orphanage up in the middle of town where Jess Lucas Park is now, they were relocating that entire campus to Palmetto. Everything, all the buildings, tearing them down and everything. So, Lavanda's father, with his connections, got access to, to the bricks from those original buildings. He bought some of the bricks, or maybe they were donated, I don't know. And he used those to build the addition onto that house. That garage is built out of bricks from the former Georgia Baptist Children's Home. I think that's so cool, don't you? Hi, Carol. Good to see you this morning. And so that's a little interesting tidbit about that house. I'll bet the owners of it don't even know that. But Lavanda told me that. Um, so, yeah, I think that's so fascinating. And little stories like that uh, just fascinate me because every town has interesting stories. You just got to dig for them. So another little piece that I got about this property that Lavanda told me about is if you look, they, they've got all this land right next to it. And then along the sidewalk, there's this little right there, that little, uh, whatever you call it, drive up thing. Is that called an easement, a driveway? I don't know what it is, but it just drives up into the woods. And I've always thought, oh, there must have been another house there that's, that's gone now. But Lavanda told me that no, back in the day, her family, uh, this would have been back in the seventies, maybe. Her family, her father owned a, a, an RV. And so he had built a garage back in there and this is where he would drive his RV and park it. So now I know what was in the woods here. Cause there's this whole stretch of woods from the Ivy home. There's where they parked their RV, all of this. I don't think this has ever been developed. It kind of goes down like that. It's going to be. It's going to be. The way the town is going, it's going to be. But this is a beautiful little stretch of, of Woodrow. So, and I know, again, I'm sure... An apron! Thank you! My, my beautiful, lovely, talented real estate friend, Carol Cahill, said that's called an apron. I love that you're here and you're able to tell me that, my friend. Thank you. So I'm walking down Woodrow and I'll show you guys some beautiful homes here. There's 517 couple of older homes. This one is beautiful. Oh, and the owner's out front. I've never met him before, but his house is so beautiful. Look at that. Good morning. Good. I'm taking a walk around the neighborhood and I'm actually showing a lot of my friends who used to live here what the town looks like and how beautiful your house is. It's a pleasure. I don't know. You look wonderful. How long have you had the house? Oh, in 2000. It's so lovely. Oh, you own that one as well? Oh, you owned that one and you sold it. It's so beautiful. I love that it says Aloha. Do you go to Hawaii? Yay! I've been twice. I love that. I love it there. 
Oh, you are. I don't know your names. What are your names? I didn't get it. Eva and Vic. It's such a pleasure to meet you both. Bye. It's a lovely house. All right. Bye-bye. Oh, that's so nice. Eva and Vic. So they used to own this house, and then that must have been an empty lot. And they built that beautiful house. Just look at that. Look at that. So, um, interestingly enough, every time I would walk by that house, I would see a banner out there that says Aloha. Now, I always wondered, do they go there all the time? And now she was born in, in, uh... Hawaii. I'm a little distracted right now because I'm so excited that I'm, I love meeting neighbors, but I'm, I can't hear very well. And I'm pretty sure that they said their name is Eva and Vic. She said, hi, Dewey. So she must follow the Hateville channel. Uh, so if you watch this and you know them, or if you are them, clarify, I'm only 15, 53 years old, but my, my ears are going because of all those years of performing at Disney. The speakers were very loud. But I was young. I didn't care. Okay, now we are at the intersection of Woodrow and Old Jonesboro Road. And all of you who've lived in Hapeville will identify with Old Jonesboro Road because it's, you know, other than Dogwood, formerly Stewart, this is the main thoroughfare, was the main thoroughfare through Hapeville for a very, very, very long time. Especially before the highways came through. If you're coming through Hapeville, you would either come down Stewart Avenue or you'd come down Old Jonesboro Road. There are other ways, but these were the two main ones. So it's interesting to think this was a main thoroughfare at one point, but now it's literally, you know, it's a neighborhood street. This is 3245, oh no, 3243 Old Jonesboro Road. That says 3245 which I never noticed before. And that makes me wonder if this house has been divided into two. Like if there, you drive around the back and there's a, that happens a lot in Hayville. The homes are divided up into apartments. It's not a recent thing, but uh, you'll, you'll see two mailboxes often. But here it is, Old Jonesboro Road. I'm sure a lot of you who've lived here in the past will love it. Now, one thing that I love is uh, on one of my walks, I met the man named Steve at 3234. And what I love about Steve's house is he had to take uh, a huge tree out of his front yard and look what he did with it. He turned the stump into a little house. Look at it, it even has a, a little stove pipe going up. That lamp turns on at night. It's got furniture down in the front. The dog is sitting there um, right now. I'm not sure why, but he's not usually there. But isn't that lovely? Thanks for sticking around, David. I appreciate it. Um, when I met Steve one day, I asked him about that, that tree stump, and he said uh, that the reason he did that was, one, to have something really cool for neighbors to look at, but two, he said that tree over the years grew so big and the roots grew so close and down under his house uh, that he decided not to risk any damage to the house by pulling the um, pulling the stump out. And he said something about even if you pull the stump out, like where the roots used to go uh, could rot and then like that causes little tunnels for water to go under your house. So he decided to just leave it there and turned it into that cute little uh, elf house, basically. Isn't it cute, Carol? I'm sure you've seen it in person when you've driven by, but when you take a walk, it's nice because you can stop and look at it. So just as a reminder, um, on this walk, God, it's beautiful. Uh, on this walk, I'm headed down Old Jonesboro Road to show you a particular house. Oh, I just realized we're passing something else I can tell you about. So this little house on 3190, we just crossed Oak Drive. And there's this little house at 3190 Old Jonesboro Road. It's just tucked back under all these trees. It's never, this, this yellow van has been here. I've been here for almost four years and that yellow van's never moved. Um, but back in the 40s, 50s, and I think even the 60s, this was a little uh, residential business here on Old Jonesboro Road. And through this old, old, 
overgrowth and everything, I can show you a little bit more so it'll make sense. And then it opens up right here. This is all their property at 3190 Old Jonesboro Road. And I often wondered, oh, look at these beautiful berries growing on the, I don't think they're edible, but they're beautiful. But here's the house at 3190. And then there's this dip down in here and it fills up with water sometimes. And you can see these old trees that were clearly intentionally put here way long time ago. Um, but that's a little pond down there and, and it's kind of rectangular. So I, I would look at it when, in the fall especially, when I can see it. And thank you, Catherine Bennett, I appreciate that. So I noticed all this indentation and I was like, somebody dug a pond back there. So I did some research and I found out that you, this used to be called the Bevel uh, give me just a second. The Bevel Bait Farm. Bevel's Bait Farm. I found old advertisements for it from, I want to say the 50s. Bevel's Bait Farm right here on um, Old Jonesboro Road. We're across from 3066 Jackson Street. Here's Jackson and Old Jonesboro. I like to show you guys all these details because I know those of you who used to live here will be like, oh, turn the camera over there. I used, I know somebody there, right? The, the, all of this will trigger something for you and you probably enjoy seeing your old town in any aspect. But whoever lived here, the Bevel family, um, I found a couple of the kids on on Facebook a couple years ago and I figured this out and I chatted with them about it. But um, they didn't have a lot of information because they were just kids when their grandparents, a couple, ran the Bevel's Bait Farm. But what the Bevel's Bait Farm was, was they... They grew little minnows and fish or whatever in this little pond. And hate villians who were gonna go fishing in nearby lakes, I don't know what those nearby lakes were or where they are, because they certainly aren't around anymore. Maybe they went out of town to do it. But they would come right here, park out front, go into Bevel's Bait Farm, go back and get their bait to go fishing. Isn't that freaking cool? I love that they were businesses in Hateville, right in the middle of neighborhoods. They were neighborhood grocery stores, bait farms, little machine repair shops, all kinds of stuff. So we're headed up, uh, Darlene Morgan says, I remember it well. Darlene, I would love if you wanna send me a message about, do you remember the people? Do you remember what kind of bait they made? What it looked like? What kind of bait they grew? All right, we're walking up Old Jonesboro Road and we're passing by 3156 Old Jonesboro Road. And this one is um, 3150 Old Jonesboro Road. Look at that tree, you guys. Look at the trees in their yard. That one's just saying, I'm gonna go that way. Isn't that lovely? Here is 3161 on the other side. And this little house has had no action since I've lived here. It's just kind of closed up and it's had the same wreath in the window for four years. This one is, don't know. But that one's on the corner of Birch and Old Jonesboro. Another big old tree. And there goes Birch down the hill. It is fascinating, isn't it, Matino? One thing that I love about living here is the culture of the trees. I've never lived anywhere where the trees were our neighbors, basically. And sometimes, most of the time, we enjoy those neighbors. They bring us so much pleasure, but then they get old, they get unpredictable, they get big, and we're worried they're gonna fall on our houses. And then the trees become an issue. I think it's such a metaphor for uh, and then we cut them down. I think it's such a metaphor for uh, our Western culture and how we deal with seniors of any way. Of, of, you know, they have value, they have value, they have value. They're old and they're complicated. Put them in a nursing home. That's <laughs> what we do with our trees. That's what we do with our trees. I know sometimes it's unavoidable, but uh, so here we are at Old Jonesboro Road. And the reason that I came over here is I've done a post before about these original 10 houses along here. Two of them are on this side at uh, Maple and the other eight are here. And I did a post a while ago. I feel like I'm a, <coughs> excuse me. 
This one's cute. Look at 3138. It looks so tiny and then behind it's a hill and there's so much more house to it back there. But uh, I did a post a while ago uh, about this neighborhood, this huge sprawling neighborhood that in Hapeville is called Moreland Park. And how uh, it was one of the uh, one of the early developments, not the earliest, I'd say about the third or fourth development in town. Intentional, we're gonna build a bunch of tract houses developments. And this one, uh, Moreland Park, was advertised and built in 1938. And the original 10 houses that people would come down to this woody, forest-like open space of Hapeville, they'd come down from Atlanta looking for fresh air and respite from the city, They'd come down and look at these beautiful 10 new homes that were built uh, here in Hapeville. I did a, a, a post about them a couple times. Uh, if you scroll back, you can find it. Or search for Moreland Park in the search bar for uh, the Hapeville channel, you'll find it. And I show all of the houses. So the other day, about a week ago, maybe two weeks ago, I was walking down through here and I saw that one of the cute little ones of those 10 was being stripped and it appeared renovated. So I posted my excitement and I posted pictures about it. It's number 3143. But then yesterday I got a, a message from my, my immediate neighbor, James, and he said, I just drove by and uh, it's being torn down. So I don't know that if initially uh, I was wrong and they were going to tear it down all, all along or that if during the renovation, a tree fell on it. But here we are, the sun's hitting it perfectly. 3143. Here's 3147. That was an original house here in Hapeville, built in 1938. So was that green one over there at 3139. So was this one across the way on the corner of Maple and Old Jonesboro at 3124. All original houses. So was that one and then a, a couple down there. But look, look y'all. And what made me, you can see the pictures of it. Um, from a couple weeks ago, but what made me think they were renovating it is they had just put a new window in, you see? And they'd stripped all of this down and look at all the beautiful old wood there. But uh, I don't think they're renovating it now, guys. I think they're actually tearing it down. Um, or nature had a different idea. It's hard, I don't wanna go up into this person's land, but there's a big tree right there sort of leaning. So I'm like, what happened over the last couple of weeks? I thought maybe fire, but there's there's no burn. This this is not all, the black is not fire in person. You can see that um, it's paper. It's like that tar paper they put underneath. So I thought they were renovating it and clearing it all off. I really still think they were. Um, at this point, if this house is gonna be saved, it's not gonna be. I think I might get brave and walk up um, the sidewalk just a little bit, but oh, I was so excited. You see the roof is totally gone, totally gone. But it, it's such a beautiful little lot right up off the hill of the road and it catches the sun beautifully in the morning. Ah, poop. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm the only, here's the thing. Uh, change happens. I lived in New York for, for six years and uh, New York City, and a lot of people would complain when an old building was torn down and a new building went up. And I would always point to the fact that there was a time where the beautiful Waldorf Astoria was torn down and everybody was upset about it, but what did we get in place of it? The Empire State Building. Change is inevitable. The same is true here in Hapeville. Um, it's not so much the loss of the house for me, and that I don't like the beautiful new house that's obviously gonna go there. What is, is, what breaks my heart is I think about all of the Christmases, all of the times the, the man of the house mowed the lawn, all of the dinners that they had together in there. I, I think about the losses uh, of, of experiences. And so that's why I try to capture things because I don't want those things to be forgotten. I actually keep a file on my computer, I have a folder for every address that I learned something about in Hateville, and I save it. Because I imagine in the future, after I'm gone, somebody looking at that collection, you know, somebody who's three years old now buying 
one of these houses when they're an adult and saying, what was here before? And they'll be able to click on that and go, oh, from the Dewey McGee collection, that crazy guy who saved all the information. I'm able to tell that, you know, Carol Cahill lived here in 1975 and she said, and then I, they can look at stuff like that. But here are more of the houses. The first house uh, of the originals was this one. For some reason it skipped that one and then it was this one, this one, this one, this one, the house that they're tearing down. Uh, this one, this one, and the one on the corner. Uh, anyway. So that's the thing. I'm not against new development. I think there is a place for that, and it's it's unavoidable. People want new things, and this town, you know, things do deteriorate. It just makes me sad when I see a house, not just a house, but people, uh, things. Death is difficult, and seeing the death of that house is sad to me. But I look forward to seeing the beautiful new house that's going to be there someday, and all new memories will be made for somebody in that house. So it's not a bad thing that the house is going away. It's just sad. It's just sad. And uh, there you have it. Carol says July 2020, that is. The tax record says it sold for, it says $10. Am I reading that correctly? Yep. And she said odd. May have been a family inheritance. That's right. It could have been. Anyway, uh, we'll take one last, last look at 3143 and say bye. You made a lot of people happy, I'm sure. We'll never know every single story that happened inside your walls since 1938. But I hope it was more good stories, stories of love and warmth and health than the other. Um, thank you guys for following me this morning. Now I'm going to work on being mindful and present for the rest of my walk. And I thank you for joining me. And for those of you uh, who used to live in Hateville and now have joined the Hateville channel, I want to say thank you very much for doing that. I really appreciate when you share your memories, your written memories in the, in the form of comments or messages directly to me. I especially enjoy when you send me pictures. Don't ever question, is this picture something he'd want to see? Absolutely. Show me the pictures of your time here in Hateville because in every picture, there's a clue to something else that leads you to something else that leads you to something else. And, uh, okay, I have to show you this before I go, <laughs> just because it's adorable and terrifying at the same time. Happy Halloween, y'all. <laughs> Thanks for being here with me. Enjoy the rest of your day. Create yourself a great day. Bye.